Okay, and welcome back. Hour number two on this Friday night. We're going to spend some time this evening with uh, one of the best independent UFO researchers and analysts in the world. He is William Puckett of UFOs Northwest, your source of current UFO sightings. Bill's sightings come in from all over the place. We have several eyewitnesses on the program scheduled for us to listen to in the next hour or two. Are you there, William? I'm here. Good evening, Jeff. Uh, how are you tonight? I'm fine. It's nice to hear your voice again. Glad to have you back on the program. How, Thanks for having me. Oh, of course. How uh, how are things going in general, in terms of frequency of reports, quality of reports? We're into summer now, spring and summer, and it always picks up then. But, you know, Peter Davenport tells me uh, so often on the program and off that there are so many uh, kooks and idiots out there who like to play games and, and make false reports. What's the general quality of your profession now, William? How is it going? Actually, it hasn't changed a whole lot in the several years I've been doing this. Getting about two to three reports a day so far in the year 2012. Uh Uh-huh. And yes, I do get hoaxes. And some, of course, I'm not quite sure whether or not they're hoaxes. As far as the quality of reports, uh, I've had some pretty good ones this year, good photos, uh, some fairly good videos, and uh, some pretty reliable witnesses also. Right. Right. We're and, seeing, we're, we're seeing, now I know Peter is getting reports all the time of what are commonly called red fireballs. They're not necessarily in flames, but they're red lights and they're moving around. I guess you're getting similar reports too. I would term them more red-orange orbs. There you go. I do believe that a good percentage of these are Chinese lanterns. It's unfortunately the true. Research, yeah. <laughs> the research that I've done on, on many of the reports, I, I look, have them check the weather, and then I also verify it with a local weather station. I look at the winds aloft, and then ask them the direction of the movement, the consistency of movement. Yes. For the most part, every one of these reports I've received were drifting with the wind. Now, that doesn't mean necessarily that they're a homemade hot air balloon or flotation device, but it certainly suggests that. They're it definitely does. not moving under their own power. So based on that, plus the fact that they appear in one part of the sky, disappear in another part of the sky, move across the sky. This is quite consistent with Chinese lanterns. Yeah. What are uh, they... I will add that Chinese lanterns are, are dangerous. They, they are oh, fire hazards. I, absolutely. Forest fires, brush fires, you name it. People can die. This is not a game, and it should never be messed with. The, the idea of a sighting of, let's say, multiple red-orange orbs or spheres, what would the movement pattern be that would argue for them not to be Chinese lanterns. Of course, if they if they show lateral movement, go up, come down, get change, larger, change get direction, smaller, change sure. shape, change mm-hmm. color, reverse direction. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And most importantly, are they behaving intelligently? Do they right. respond to any stimuli like blinking flashlights? or something of that order. Which or happens a uh, lot, happen. lot of cases like that. Also, if they are moving uh, within relation to each other, uh, in other words, around each other, moving toward and away from each other, any kind of independent movement that's not necessarily just floating along with the breeze, those are, those are always very interesting. And we're getting a lot of those, too. Uh, we're getting group sightings, six, eight, ten objects at a time. Uh, some people call them fleet sightings, some call them flotillas, whatever you want. But there are group sightings of these things popping up, uh, I think, more often. Is, is this a trend that you've noticed to be increasing, too? Yes, so those particular category mm-hmm. of sightings, absolutely. It started just about a year ago in July, around the 4th of July. Of course, the 4th of July and New Year's are always the peak time of sightings because <laughs> yeah. people are outside. Yeah, 
All true. But also because more people are launching these flotation devices. But I have noticed in this particular category, the orange red orbs, since last July, July 2011, there has been quite a few more of these these uh, particular studies. Right. And I've had videos and photos and, you know, other evidence. People are definitely seeing them and uh-huh. also groups of independent witnesses. But for the most part, just with the uh, particular characteristics that we discussed, I've not found that to be true with most of them. Not all yeah. of them, but most of them. What's, uh, what's amazing to me is the technological revolution that is making uh, your business and, and our interests here on the program uh, even more fascinating, and that, of course, are the cameras in cell phones. These things are, are really good. They can do stills, they can do video, and they're amazing. And when we see daylight sightings, um, those are always the most fascinating. It's very tough to, to, to videotape or to record digitally things in the night sky. you got no perspective, you've got not much of anything. You'll get some lights moving around if you're lucky. If you can get any kind of a ground reference point in that field of view in your frame... Uh, you're much better off. Even if it's a building, a dark building, a dark tree, it doesn't matter. But uh, by all means, keep that camera ready. You never know when you're going to need it. And you can report to uh, to William Puckett, UFOs Northwest. You've got some wonderful places to report these things to. And we're going to talk to our first of three eyewitnesses now. Bill, go ahead and introduce, if you would, our first. Hey, this person's uh, name is J.C. from... Had a sighting in Canton, Michigan, nearly four years ago, July of 2008. This is a really interesting report, and the fact that it was a triangular object, and the fact that electromagnetic interference was noted, and it's one of the several reports uh, we're going to be talking about tonight regarding triangular sightings, and I'd like to welcome J.C., yeah, absolutely. It was a it was a pretty clear night. It was warm out, uh, not too much of wind or nothing, and it was twelve oh three, and I was on my way home and I was minding to, like, minding your own business. Exactly, just listening to my music. I believe I was on the phone a few minutes before this, and I saw a bunch of lights in like above the gas station coming up. Uh huh. But at the next light, and I was like, "Is that a helicopter or what?" Because it was. It was just hanging out over there. So how, I how, how ur- excuse me, JC, how urban is the area we're describing here? Rural? Uh, is it well populated? Are you in a, a city it's environment? It's pretty well populated. Okay. So there are a lot of lot of buildings and lights and, and city things. And you're yeah, looking exactly. you're looking down the road at the next service station and, and coming up behind that or what appears to be behind that are are some lights. All right. What do the lights look like? Yeah, uh, there was it was three lights. It was three. It was a rectangular. They were perfectly like the brightest, clearest white you ever saw. And the triangular formation was facing towards. It was facing east, and my car was facing south. Mm-hmm. And I'm coming up to the light, and I noticed that it's not a helicopter, and it's a triangular ship sitting right above the gas station. So I turn off my music and I grab for my phone to try to take a picture and my phone won't turn on. It's completely off, could not power it up. And as the light turns green, I I slowly go through the light watching it and it starts moving with me along the along the side of the okay. road. Okay. Oh, may I ask you to hold on? This is absolutely amazing. Now, yeah, sure, no problem. It shut your it shut your cell phone down, but it did not interfere with your vehicle. That's one. You see, though, the all the lights on my dashboard were illuminated. The car was running and it was driving, uh-huh. but the uh-huh. electronics were not working. And I get home. And you had been talking I'm, on your cell phone, right? Before yeah, the sighting. Prior, prior, before seeing the lights, correct? When, uh-huh. when you and say, when you say, fine. JC, when you say the electronics weren't working, the the electronics in your car. Correct. So I, such when as... I had gotten home from the, seeing the ship, mm-hmm. all the my headlights wouldn't turn off, my taillights wouldn't turn off, all the gauges were illuminated on the dashboard. Huh? Which you, I've you never, never experienced you, you, before. You switched them off, and they wouldn't go off. Yeah, this is 
Correct. I, so wow. I just left them running. I ran inside. Too weird. Yeah, and I turned on the TV, and uh, Home Improvement was on, and the first thing that comes out of the TV was, so, Tim, you're telling me you've seen a UFO? And I don't know if you're familiar with the TV show Home Improvement. Uh, I've heard of it. So this was the dialogue from the... the uh, yeah, exactly, from and the show. And so that, that seemed a little bit ironic to put it mildly. Yeah, I don't know if they were messing with me or what, <laughs> unless it was just pure coincidence. That's pretty weird. All right. A lot of coincidences there. Definitely yeah. True. Yeah. And, yeah. Now, and, my and understanding, next... uh, JC, you, your car had been working okay prior to that, right? Yeah, it was fine. And the next day, I I had to get a new cell phone because I couldn't get any outgoing or incoming calls. They said it was all fried. And then I took my car to the shop on Monday because it was the weekend, and they said all the electronic sensors were fried. Wow. wow. Now, when you were driving, was there other vehicular traffic around you, or were you the See, only that's the car? thing. Usually where I live, there's usually a decent amount of traffic at around midnight. And that night, there was nobody on the road, which I had thought was a little eerie to begin with before I even saw the lights. Huh. Okay. Was that on a weekend or a weekday, do you recall? It, I, I'm pretty sure it was a weekend. I want to say it was like a mm -hmm. Friday, Friday mm -hmm. night. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I remember I had to jump my car all weekend before I could take it into the shop on Monday. And all the sensors were it. gone. Wow. Yep. Now, you're Would at the, the lights I'm... go off when the battery run down? Yeah, every, the lights, everything would shut off once the battery would die. But uh -huh. in order to get it going again, I'd have to jump it. J JC, I want to take you back to the stoplight or, or stop was it a stoplight or a stop sign it was a stoplight okay you're at an intersection and there's correct. no other no other cars around you you're it you stopped at the intersection correct yep all right correct. now let's let's put ourselves with you sitting there with our hands on the wheel where sure. are you seeing the ship left right it's straight off to ahead? my left i'm sitting at the light the gas station's off to my left out my driver window mm-hmm and it's right up, right above the, the the top of the station. Like if you were at the the gas station, you wouldn't have been able to see the ship because it was that close to the to the ground. Wow! So you're it was looking like 40, at forty forty feet off the ground, I'd say. Okay, you're <laughs> you're looking out your passenger window. Correct. You must you must have been mind blown at what you were saying. Oh yeah, saying. I, I almost went. Yeah, I was freaking out. I would say. Um, 